Um, I'm going to go over just a little bit of uh, safety data. We have uh, two abstracts that were pre presented at uh, the Society of Interventional Radiology. Uh, if we can get the next slide here. This is a, basically it's a prospective uh, study of 100 consecutive uh, cases using the Diamondback uh, device uh, in the office setting. 35% um, of those patients were uh, critical and ischemia patients, and the others were um, claudicants. But I think at this point, we're pretty much flip-flop now, where we do probably uh, two-thirds uh, critical and ischemia patients and a third uh, claudicants. Um, so in terms of uh, safety data, um, we basically had three uh, collision device failures, which re uh, required manual compression, um, and two uh, groin hematomas, which required uh, prolonged um, holding. Uh, but none of those cases uh, required any transfusion or surgery. Uh, I would say that one, the key to keeping the uh, uh, groin hematoma rates low, as well as uh, AV fistula rates low, is, all, is of course ultrasound guidance. Um, your closure device, and we use closure devices in 100% of, of those cases, uh, is going to work much better if you have a nice access where you're avoiding any uh, large anterior plaques, you're getting into a nice soft spot. So whichever device you're going to use is certainly going to work better if you, if you get better access in the beginning of the case. Um, and then in terms of uh, major complications, uh, there are no cases of uh, limb loss, MI stroke, or death within 24 hours. There was one macroembolus um, that, was, uh, that uh, traveled down into the lateral plantar artery, uh, but fortunately uh, it was not... Uh, and you don't routinely use closure devices, right? I mean, sorry, you don't routinely use embolic protection devices? No, uh, we, we don't use embolic uh, right. protection. I think certainly with orbital atherectomy, if you kind of move slowly and don't spin too fast, then uh, okay. you can avoid Okay, ready. That. Yep.